Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 25th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, this week I'm actually teaching our intrusion detection class, and one issue that always keeps coming up is, well, how to detect uh, the download of malicious files or the exfiltration of data. And of course, one tool that attackers like to use are various websites out there that allow you to share files for free. These sites are either used to upload the data for exfiltration or, well, to store malicious code and then download it from these often well-known and non-malicious sites that, of course, are then not necessarily detected as suspicious. Xavier ran into a piece of malware like this. It's PowerShell code, and in this case, transfer.sh was used. Transfer.sh, it's well-known, but not necessarily one of these mainstream file-sharing sites, like, for example, a Dropbox. On the other hand, transfer.sh, SH is kind of attractive because it, first of all, allows a completely free and unauthenticated hosting and also has a very trivial API to use tools like curl or any similar HTTP client in order to download the file or even upload files. More details in Xavier's post about this particular malware. And then we got a new vulnerability in Western Digital PR 4100 NASA's CVE 2022-23121. And yes, there is already an exploit available as part of a write-up by Alex Plaskett, who I think found and reported this vulnerability. What makes uh, this vulnerability kind of special is that it's not in one of the web applications. That's where we usually see these vulnerabilities. Instead, it's in the Netatalk service. Netatalk is an open source product that implements Apple's uh, filing protocol or AFP. I don't think this necessarily exploitable from the public internet, but definitely exploitable in the default configuration of the device from the internal interface, it does require that a public share is enabled. These devices often have sort of a public share that doesn't require authentication for quick and easy file sharing among users of the device on the internal network. A patch has been released by both Netatalk as well as Western Digital. Western Digital actually just removed the component, which makes sense. Uh, This protocol is no longer really used. Netatalk fixed the vulnerability and in addition, a number of other uh, vulnerabilities that were also reported to the project. And ESET is reporting about a set of malicious copycat crypto coin wallets that they have been observing being distributed in China. The reason these are specifically advertised to Chinese users is that recent crackdowns on cryptocurrency makes it more difficult for Chinese users to actually use some legitimate wallets. Now, initially, these crypto coin wallets were just advertised on services like Telegram, but more recently, An article was published on a legitimate website that actually recommends these fake wallets as a way to bypass the Chinese crypto coin ban. Needless to say, the main purpose of these fake wallets that mimic some legitimate wallets is to steal your credentials in order to steal your cryptocurrency. And then we got a little bit news from the Lapsus group. It appears that uh, police in England has arrested seven individuals, uh, all uh, high school friends apparently, that uh, are uh, alleged to be behind the Lapsus group. Now, a day earlier, uh, Brian Grepps and an article in Bloomberg News did suggest just that, and Brian sort of presented some evidence why he thinks uh, these particular individuals are behind uh, lapses. So we'll see what comes out of it. Uh, At this point, of course, uh, nothing is really confirmed yet, but the arrests were apparently made in England. 
And the US Justice Department has unsealed indictments against four Russian government employees. They're charged with hacking various critical infrastructure systems. And these attacks go back several years. The interesting part about these indictments is usually uh, that some of the unsealed documents will give some insights into the techniques used uh, by these attackers that may not have been public before. So in particular, if you are in the critical in infrastructure field, that's certainly something that's worthwhile uh, to read up on. And for everybody else, well, uh, sadly, some of these techniques, they tend then to trickle down into more commodity style attacks. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.